Hi, and thanks very much for joining me. What I want to do quickly is look at another aspect of social change in the 1960s under Harold Wilson's government. And what I'm going to focus on for this video is feminism and the progress or lack of progress that's made for equality, women's rights during the 1960s. Now, before we go any further, I think what we really need to do is understand the position at the start of the 1960s. And in the 1950s, the role of women had been very traditional. It had been the woman was expected to be a housewife, a mother, staying at home, looking after the children. And the man of the house, the husband, was expected to go out and work, and bring back a salary, bring back a wage, and essentially that was it. Both people had their roles. And that can really, really be summed up very, very succinctly in a quote from Woman's Own magazine, 1961. And this describes what the role of a woman was perceived to be at the start of the 1960s. So we'll have a quick look at that before we go any further. So this magazine says, women were born to love, born to be partners to the opposite sex. And that is the most important thing they can do in life, to be wives and mothers, to fix their hearts on one man and to care for him with all bounteous and unselfishness that love can inspire. So it's really clear there that the role of a woman is to stay at home love a man and nothing else. That is the role of a woman in life. And now we need to look at how does that change? Why is that challenged? How is it challenged? And what is the result of that at the end of the 1960s? So to start us off, what I'm gonna show you is a very quick summary of the 1960s. And I'll bring that slide up for us to have a look at now. And we can see, as I've said, 1950s, attitudes see women as remaining at home and being housewives and mothers. And then in response to this gender stereotyping, we see the growth of this second wave feminism. And it's growing very much from the American movement that started. They've taken their inspiration from the civil rights movement and seen the effect that's had. And now women are starting to call out for the same. The movement moves across the Atlantic to Britain, writers and academics start to argue for gender equality, start to argue for education to be better for women, more opportunity, better employment and pay equality as well. Now we see legislation being passed and when I say legislation we're talking about laws being passed in the Houses of Parliament to resolve some of these inequalities. However, what we are going to see is some of these inequalities will still exist at the end of the 1960s. You could argue that inequalities exist today. I'm not disagreeing with that. However, we're following this through 1960s at the moment. And then we're going to look at protests and strikes. Specifically, we're going to look at one strike, the Ford Machinist strike in 1968 in Dagenham. So that gives us a very brief overview of where we are. What I do find useful when we're looking at A-level and we're looking at change over time is quite often creating a timeline. That works well when we're looking at feminism, works well when we look at immigration, works well at uh, foreign policy, Northern Ireland. So I'm going to show a timeline here just looking at feminism and equality over the 1960s. And you can see by looking at the timeline, there are quite a few aspects that we need to or can be looking at. And here we have a look, we've got the contraceptive pill being made available to married women in 1961. Now that's significant because it's allowing women to have a choice, a decision about whether they become pregnant or not. The significant part here is it's for married women only. It's not until 1967 that local authorities are allowed to provide um, birth control advice, family planning advice to married and single women, and single women are allowed the contraceptive pill on the NHS. 
It's not until 1967 that happens. But we should be able to make these connections now. We can see how this is carrying on through. Let's have another look back at the timeline, though. Now, we can see 1963, Betty Friedan writing The Feminine Mystique. And we can make a connection there across to 1970 and Jermaine Greer writing The Female Eunuch. And it's important to identify as well one way in which the feminist movement progresses is by writers making very, very clear challenges to the perception of what the role of a woman is. Both these authors are saying that women have been expected to stay at home. They're essentially imprisoned. And they do use words like this. They're being imprisoned. They're being forced to stay at home and not allowed to achieve their full potential, not allowed to achieve their potential as individuals and not allowed to achieve their potential and contribute to society. So that's an example again of how we're seeing progress or how we're seeing um, challenges made to these stereotypes. We'll return back to this timeline again now. We'll have a look at legislation and see how that progre progresses the role of women or progresses women's rights during this period. And if we go back to the timeline, we can see that we've got the Married Women's Property Act, we've got the Voice Act, we've got a number of Acts of Parliament here coming through. A lot of these Acts of Parliament, particularly when we're looking at Divorce Act and property, are essentially now ensuring that when divorce takes place, first of all, it will be easier for a woman to divorce a man. And also, when a divorce does take place, it ensures there is a financial allowance, a financial contribution made towards the woman. Because don't forget, the woman has been expected to stay at home throughout. And therefore, if she divorces, there's now an argument to say she should be entitled to some form of settlement, some form of financial um, income at the end of the divorce. But it also kind of re reaffirms the idea that the woman should be at home. So it's a double-edged sword, is this? We do see that there's progress being made, but also we're seeing that it's still reaffirming the traditional values of the woman being at home. The final piece of legislation that's important to bear in mind here is 1967 and the Abortion Act. And that now allows women to have an abortion if they have the agreement from two doctors up to 21 weeks pregnancy. And this is absolutely revolutionary. It removes the need for backstreet abortions, illegal abortions, which are dangerous, and gives women a lot more say, a lot more control over their own bodies. We'll look at this later on when we look at other liberalising legislation that's passed during this period. But in terms of female equality, in terms of allowing women more rights, that's a significant piece of legislation. So you've seen a timeline now, and that gives you an idea of how that progress is made. A good, a good activity now to do would be to look at the timeline again and start making connections as to which, one, which parts of this are significant. How are they significant and why? An activity could be to use a three column table, write down the events, what it is, describe what it is, and then in your final column, explain why that's important. And I've shown you an example in front of you now, just nice and simple table, and it helps with your revision. Because what you should be able to do when you've revised this is almost complete the table yourself. Pick three or four key points that you want to do and have a go at writing those down without having to refer to notes, without having to refer to this video. Now, having looked at the timeline, a final activity that is useful is to consider this argument. Was there progress made for women during the 1960s? And a nice, easy way to do this is a simple two columns. Thumbs up for one, yes, there has been progress. Thumbs down, no, there hasn't been progress. So I'll show you the thumbs up column first of all, and let's have a look at where there has been progress for women during this period. Now, first of all, new technology has allowed for kitchen appliances to free women from domestic chores in the kitchen, washing machines, vacuum cleaners, things like that. We see increased education opportunities and 28% of university students are women by 1970. This in turn leads to an increased range of employment opportunities for women. And as we've looked at previously, we've got women now having greater control over unwanted pregnancies, 
and then the changes to the foreign law to the changes to divorce laws which make it easier for women to get divorced. So we've looked at the thumbs up though, we've looked at the changes. Now to give it a balanced argument for a balanced essay we need to look at this counter view and we need to look at negatives where people would say hold on there hasn't been progress for women or this progress is very limited. And if we start off straight away whilst new kitchen appliances have in theory freed women from the kitchen they are still seen as the homemaker so when you look at advertisements in the 1960s when you see vacuum cleaners, washing machines all these things being advertised there's always a picture of a woman stood next to it generally with children as well so it's always re-establishing this always reaffirming this traditional view of the role of a woman. Despite improvements in education Opportunities for women in managerial roles are only 5%, so only 5% of managerial roles are filled by women. Women are still expected to be responsible for childcare. And then finally, the changes to divorce legislation have really emphasised the fact that women are economically dependent on men. There's no economic independence for women at this point. So as we bring this to an end, what I want to do is look at the view of a historian who writes about this period. And again, we're going to go to Dominic Sandbrook's White Heat. And what does he say as he's writing about the progress made for women during the 1960s? And he writes, at the end of the 60s, feminism was still regarded by most people as a minority obsession or extremist nonsense. But this should not detract from the fact that the era brought enormous changes to the lives of millions of ordinary women. They were implicated in all the major social trends of the period, from the increasingly flexible nature of work and technological transformation of the household to the liberalisation of divorce and the legalisation of abortion. By having smaller families, expanding into the workforce and asserting their equal status with men, women participated in British national life as never before. So there we go. We've looked at the progress for women's rights and the fight against inequality in the 1960s. We've seen some areas where there has been progress made. We've also seen areas where that progress has been limited. It's important to make connections though as you look at the movements into the 1970s, 80s and that third wave of feminism moving on into the 90s. Okay, thanks very much. Bye-bye.